Hi guys, this is Andrew Holmes, and every single week we talk about one thing and one thing only, and that is how do you make money with real estate? So welcome to the show, and our guest today is Michael Oshevsky. I finally got the name correct. Uh, so Michael, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Great. So Michael, um, for those of you guys, you are a REO broker. I know you have a, your hands in a lot of different pots. But today we're going to kind of talk about REOs and investing side of uh, real estate because that's what the show is about. So uh, for those of those people that are not familiar with it, what does a REO broker do exactly for a bank? I mean, what what is that role? Can anybody be an REO broker, or um, how do you get to have all these listings? What happens exactly? Well, REO is an acronym for real estate owned, uh -huh. and to become a broker, it's very difficult. You need to get into the banks. You need to perform. You need to constantly perform because you're only as good as your last deal. Mm -hmm. if they, they really want performance. Basically, what we do is we do everything kind of from cradle to grave, from when you when actually take the property from the foreclosure all the way to transfer a title. So you deal with the occupancies, the evictions, the property management, sometimes property repairs, sale, and closing. So it's from cradle to grave. It's, it's, it's a very long task. So let's just say it's, uh, you know, uh, Bank of Mellon owns the property, um, you're their point of contact pretty much. They don't know where the asset is. They don't know Midlothian different from Schaumburg, right? right? So they're basically saying, hey, you're their eyes and ears. You get the, you know, the, uh, the locks changed, make sure what the damage is, send them assessment reports, all that stuff you're handling for them. So it's much, much more deep, much more entailed than just a typical broker listing a property on the market. Definitely. Correct? Definitely, yeah, uh, sure. And then at that point, and hence, they select a few brokers right uh, that handle that inventory why do and I've always said is that always make friends with people who do well especially because guess what happens a deal falls through it's like at the end of the day your job is to get the bank the highest uh, buck you can't just say oh this is a friend okay here that's not how it works right but a couple contracts fall through and the asset manager says hey I need to get this property sold guess what you can tell them hey Andrew can buy the property he'll pay XYZ Right, and a lot of times, if you make friends with good people, you seem to end up with great deals, right? Because it's a people business. Would you agree with that? Definitely is. Like I said, real estate's a contact sport, and it is. It's a people business. Okay. So my question is this, right? A lot of people want to get into real estate, and everybody wants to be the next, uh, you know, real estate uh, multimillionaire, right? What, from your experience, you've been in the industry for a long time, uh, you've done well. Uh, and from what I can tell, a lot of it is, I mean, did you start out with a lot of money? Uh, do you have a money tree uh, in the back? You go and shake and dollar bills fall down. Uh, what do you think is the secret? Well, I started with no money. I had, we had no okay. money. It's, it's funny. Uh, one of the scariest times of my life was when we had our first daughter, first child, and we had no money. Okay. I said, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Right. And it was really, Michael, it's time for you to earn some money and provide for your family. And it just, you work really hard. If you're diligent, you try hard, you'll be successful. Right. So, I mean, but you haven't found a secret way, right? The secret way is based on performance, hard work, and, and your due diligence. You just keep on trying and you keep on going and you're providing good service. And you make yourself accountable, accept, uh, accessible, and transparent so people know what's going on. Especially the banks. There, there's a lot of scrutiny. There's a lot of research. and there, There's a lot of paperwork that you have to comply with. Right. And, you know, and I think that's what it is, is that at least when I was young, right? when I was 19, when I was 20, I, tr I mean, like, I'm sure everybody tries. Man, for years, I looked for a pill. I would read every book in the, you know, uh, that's out there on success, on all this kind of investing, all this stuff, right? And I've yet to found a pill. I mean, I told somebody that day, I'm like, listen, if you can find a pill that's ethical, moral, uh, you know, uh, the, and that won't basically get somebody in trouble, where somebody can be successful, we'll be happy to package it and sell it for you, right? The problem is it doesn't exist. Right? It's good old fashioned hard work. Now, I think what real estate does is it provides a equal playing field. It's based on sheer tenacity that either it's going to kill you or you're going to basically cap, uh, you know, conquer uh, this crazy thing called real estate. Would that be correct? It, it's true, and it's a great field to conquer. Anybody can do it. You, can, you just have to use your noggin and make prudent decisions. Okay. And don't get excited about a deal. So, in this segment, my last question. Talk about kind of the state of the market, right? What do you th where do you think we are? Where do you think, based on the inventory you're looking at, we're going? 
and what should investors uh, do that are looking to get in the market or that are already in the market right now? Well, I've, I've, we've seen the market. You, you've seen an increase in values. There's going to be a slight correction. It won't be as severe as 2008. But values, properties are selling. They shouldn't be selling what they're selling for in some areas. Why? Because there's a low inventory. It's a seller's market. Seller's market increases prices. It's, it's just the name of the game. Uh, people, like I, I said earlier, people need to take responsibility for their actions on how they buy. You, you don't buy a $300,000 house when you have a $50,000 a year income. Right. So that's what you have to look at. You think a correction is coming in the la in the next year or two in terms of not the up and down of the politics, but I'm talking about a major correction? Uh, well, or price, you, price can only go so high in Chicago. Right. Okay. That's what's nice about our market. We're not in the California market or the New York market where values are just so high. Right. Our, our prices were normal people can afford to buy. Right. The normal blue collar, upper uh, middle class, or it can buy the bulk of our houses here, which is really, really nice and sustainable market we have. Right. And when you look at the crash, who got hurt? The house, houses from 150000 to $1 million. Right. That's who took the whack. The, the right. Three and four million didn't. Not. But Not. those houses did. And that's, that's our middle class, upper middle class market. Right. It makes perfect sense. See, I, I think the same thing, that I don't think we're in for something, anything huge, assuming the politicians don't, again, go nuts and suddenly start doing crazy things, right? Uh, but I think there, the nor normal market corrections, the up and down, that's going to always happen. And I think nowadays, uh, see if you agree with me, I think the news cycles are looking for something. They want excitement, right? Either good or bad doesn't matter. They just want the extremes. They don't want blah, and I want blah. Right? I don't want a lot of crazy things to happen because guess what? It destroys a lot of people. I mean, now at least, uh, you know, it's like when you have money, uh, you're like, I hope the price is correct because we'll buy even more, right? But your average person uh, gets hurt in that economy and truly rich people get richer when bad things happen. I mean, it's just a fact of life, right? Any comments on that? Well, that's true. That's true. And it's, it's if you have money, you can afford to buy. Right. But you need to buy wisely. So let me tell you something. Money can evaporate and leave really quick if you don't manage it correctly. Right. So it's very important. You have to use due diligence and you have to use good, you have to have kind of premonition of what's going to happen in the marketplace. How do you do that through your due diligence of what's going on now, what's happening, and look what's going to happen in the future. And you can do that by looking what's on the market right now. Absolutely. What's sold on the market. You can kind of predict the future of the marketplace. And watch the inventory. Right. right. I mean, if the inventory swells a lot, I mean, it's simple supply and demand. Right. right? I mean, tomorrow there are, let's say, 8,000 properties in the market. It suddenly over time goes to 12, 16, 20. You don't need to be a genius to figure out, hey, guess what? There's too much inventory on the shelf. Right. And maybe now is the time to, you know, dump it quick if you're in that market and get the heck out. Right. I agree. Chicago Flipping with Andrew Holmes will return next Sunday at 12 noon. For information or questions about content of this show or to speak to Andrew, call 844 Money 55 or visit chicagocashflow.com to learn about upcoming seminars. That's 844-666-3955. And be sure to tune in next week.